welcome back to another Faithful broadcast on PastorJerome.org. We've been on a series for the last four to five weeks with you on what is called goals. We've been looking at goals and uh, the mentality that you and I need to carry in order to achieve goals in our lives. We brought this broadcast uh, in at the same time as the Football World Cup so that we have an example, a natural example to uh, teach a spiritual reality. And it's been a blessing bringing these uh, broadcasts to you. And uh, from next week onwards, we'll be on an, a, a newer series. Uh, we'll be teaching on something else. And I'm hoping to bring the teaching on goals to a conclusion today. Now, we must understand that goals are important. Just to summarize and recap where we have been through the last four or five weeks, um, the Lord spoke to Joshua and said, Joshua, I want you to be prosperous. I want you to be successful wherever you go. And uh, prosperity and a success mentality is of utmost importance if you and I are going to achieve or set goals for our lives. Because uh, a person who does not have a, a mindset uh, to prosper uh, will, will have no goal in life. They have no purpose. Uh, somebody who does not have a success mentality uh, does not require to have goals. They can just sit at home and just waste their time or with no purpose, uh, just move on in life. Uh, therefore, we learn that prosperity and success is, um, it is safe to say that it was uh, it is seen as a foundation for the achieving of all your goals because that is required. We learned that. And I gave you a simple acronym to help you understand what goals are. We learned that success is the achievement of predetermined goals. That's why success is um, the foundation and prosperity is a foundation on which you will achieve all your goals and um, only in achieving your goals you will be able to say I am a success you will not be able to say I am a success if you are not successful you are only able to say you are a success if you are successful in achieving your predetermined goals goals g-o-a-l-s god-centered g-o it must have an objective. A, it requires your abilities. L, it requires that you labor and work hard at it. S, when you bring yourself to the very, um, in close proximity to the goal, you have to score the goal. You have to make sure that you carry it to its fulfillment. Not, not you don't just start. Uh, many people have goals, but uh, they come very close and they don't achieve it. So we learned this simple acronym in achieving our goals. And then through the last three, four weeks, we've looked at many other elements in uh, which is fundamental and important in making sure that you fulfill your goals. Number one was boundaries. We use the game of football to understand that everything played in the game of football, whatever goal that was scored, it was in... Um, um, in a particular boundary. Without boundaries, you will not be able to achieve your goals. Then we learned that in the game of football, you have many different players. Even though one person might score the goal, there are, there are others who contribute towards a goal. We must understand that we need others and we call these others players, other players in our lives. Uh, Pastor Jerome, uh, no matter how big my goal is, without the support of the other people around, even for this video to come to you, to 40 plus nations, uh, there are others who are involved in it. It's, it's not just one person's goals, there are other players that contribute to the goal of one person. We understood that players are important. Number three, we learned that even as the game of football has a referee in the center, we need an umpire, an overseer, a referee, a life coach over our lives to watch over whether we are playing this game right. 
Let permit me to use that phrase, playing it right. Are we, are we going about uh, haphazardly? Or are we running all over the place? Or do we, are we moving in the right direction towards the right goal? So we needed umpires, referees, life coaches, mentors. We looked at this. And number four, um, we looked last week at the different laws that govern uh, such goals. You, 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 there, there are certain uh, rules and regulations. You can't um, achieve goals at the expense of others. This is what we looked at. There is such a thing as foul play, penalties. You can't be selfish at achieving your goals. Some people are so selfish at achieving their goals that they have achieved their goal at the expense of somebody else's joy. So somebody is crying, but you're rejoicing. You see, beloved, that is not a God-centered goal. You can't achieve your goals uh, trampling people and walking over people, wanting to be the best, but uh, uh, cursing 10,000 people along your journey. That's not a goal that you can um, claim to be yours or rejoice about it for too long. You might lose it. So these are the many different areas we looked at. Boundaries other players, the, the life coach, the laws that govern the goals, you can't achieve goals at the expense of others. And today, finally, I want to minister to you on the lines of every goal that you have, you, you must have the focus must be on a prize. There is a prize. There is a prize. There is a prize. P-R-I-E-Z-E. A prize. What good is it to achieve a goal if there is no prize? You are wasting your time. With every goal, ask yourself this question. The goals that you have in your life, what is the prize? Do you have a prize? Oh, pastor, I want to achieve this goal. What's the prize? Oh, pastor, I want to score this goal. What's the prize? The Football World Cup is over. Germany have become the world champions. They would have had their minds on the prize at every game. You know, at every nook and corner of your life, you must understand as a Christian, there is a prize on offer. There is a prize. Everything God has brought into our lives, there is a prize. We are not doing this for nothing. There is a prize. There is a prize. So today, we're going to begin at 1 Corinthians 9, verse number 24. The scripture says this, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize so run that you may obtain beautiful paul the apostle is asking a question don't you know that everyone that runs in a race you're not the only person that's running but there are others who are running game of football everybody is running but only one person might score that goal in the same way paul is explaining to the church the race that you are running in life. Run in such a way that you want to obtain the prize. You want to obtain. Your motive is, I'm going for the prize. Not necessarily the goal, but the goal is actually the prize. Now listen very carefully. The goal is actually the prize. You are going for the goal because you want the prize. It's not that you're going to take the goal with you. It is the prize that's behind that goal. So Paul the Apostle is encouraging the church, run in such a way that when people look at you, they can say for sure, look, this person has goals in his or her life. So when people look at your life and my life, are we running in such a way that people can immediately look at us and say, Look, the way you are going, I think you have a lot of goals in your life. Run in such a way that people see the motivation. More than the motivation, the motive. What is your motive as you run this race in your Christian life? What is your motive? Pastor, I want to achieve this goal. Yes, but it's actually the price. Okay, Pastor, I want to achieve the price. What's your motive? What's your motive? Is your motive your glory? Or God's glory because beloved don't forget the acronym for goals G-O-A-L-S G was God-centered if your 
the prize that you have your eyes on, the goal that you want to score, if your motive is not to bring him the glory and your motive is your glory, then my precious people of God, your motivation is a selfish motivation which God will not bless. Is your motivation, imagine the, the, the football World Cup for a moment, those football players running all over the place. If their motivation was to please the crowd, then that also is not right. Some people in church or in other circles, they say, Pastor, there is nobody supporting me. There is nobody cheering me on. There is nobody to say, oh, well done, good and faithful servant. My precious people of God, your motivation should not be the crowd. Your motivation should not be the other players. Your motivation should not come from any place. Your motivation should be, I am going to achieve this for the glory of God. Never forget that your audience is only one person. Our church is growing into thousands, but we must always remember, I must always remind myself, in the midst of thousands, there is only one person's opinion that matters. That is the opinion of the Lord. So I want you to be encouraged today to understand that there is a prize for achieving your goals. But your motive should be godly. It shouldn't be selfish. It shouldn't be to please the crowd or your personal conviction and to just help others see how great you are. These are wrong ideas. Your audience is only one person. Philippians, the book of Philippians, the third chapter. Beautiful verse, verse number 13 and 14. Philippians, the third chapter, reading from verse 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, I'm reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Whatever prize you have your eyes on, you have to press forward. You have to press forward. You have to forget the things that have happened. You can't say, Pastor, I tried 10 times in the last 10 years. Forget, don't talk like that. You must say, I'm pressing for the high prize. I'm pressing for the high call. This goal that I'm going to achieve to receive the prize is a part of my calling in life. Glory to God. Forget everything. Don't say I don't have education. Don't say I don't have a degree. You press towards. There is a pressing, beloved. Not a pushing. It's a pressing. No one will push you. You know, no one will push you. Some of us want pushers and we want others to push us into our goals. No. The Bible says, Paul himself says, I press toward the mark or for the prize of the high calling. There is a prize for the fact that God has called you. Press towards it. Don't wait till others push you. You press towards it. My precious people of God, forget how you were born, where you were born, who your parents were and what they did and what they couldn't do. How the church let you down. Forget all of that. You will not be able to achieve your goals if you are like that. I conclude with one more verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13 and verse 14 and we'll end with verse 15 first corinthians chapter 3 verse 13 to 15 look at this every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. I want you to stay focused. He shall receive a reward only if the work remains. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. I want to use the content of that verse to tell you these final thoughts as we bring this sermon series on goals to an end. Paul the Apostle is talking about some serious stuff here. You know, we are living in a day and age where people are focused on living long. There's nothing wrong with it. People are focused on a living long and I am for that. I, I tell people in our ministry, you mustn't um, plan on leaving the earth this side of 80 years of age. You must live long. The longer you live, the better you will see, the better the glory of God will begin to manifest in your life. You will see the years the locust ate, God restoring. 
that's fine. But I want you to understand that there are people who have lived beyond 100 and still couldn't finish the work that God had called them to finish. But then there are others who don't live as long, but they finish the work that God has asked them to finish. You see, you are going to get the prize for finishing well. You must finish well. Every goal must have a clean finish. It must have a clean finish, beloved. No doubts. It must have a clean finish. It must reach the very target and the very end. You and I must understand that one day everything we do in this world, it's going to be tested. We will stand before Christ one day and He will examine everything we did on this earth. And as He examines according to what we have done, we will receive a reward, beloved. That's the price. What is our greatest prize? Our greatest prize may become a surprise sometimes. You and I will be standing before Christ one day and our works will be tested. Our works will be tested by fire. He will test what we have done. Beloved, some of us will weep on that day. Some of us will be disappointed on that day. Why? Because what we thought was a God-given goal may not be a God-given goal. He'll say, my son, this is not what I wanted you to achieve in life. Oh Lord, I got this, I got that. No son, this is not. Jesus said, it is finished. Jesus said, I have finished the work you have called me to finish. You see, that is the end of the goal. You must be able to score every goal in life and say, these goals are connected to what my God required of me. Glory to God. And for that you will receive a reward. Don't just focus on living long. Focus on living long enough so that you can finish everything God has ordained you to finish in life. Till we meet again next week through a new sermon series. I pray that you will stay well, stay blessed. You can go into the archives of PastorJerome.org and search through uh, the videos that perhaps you have missed. Share these videos with others. Invite others to participate in uh, watching these broadcasts. 40 plus nations for the moment are connected to us. We bless every one of you. And we pray that your goals will be God-centered. It will carry a right objective. You will have abilities to fulfill them. You will labor accordingly. And you will score them. And you will finish everything the Lord has called you to finish in life. I pray for you. I bless you. Till we meet again next Thursday on PastorJerome.org. May your faith grow from grace to grace. And we pray for you and we bless you. Achieve your goals for His glory. His glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.